What's good, y'all? Welcome to the one and only Pinnacle Game, and we're back at it with another video. I have my partner ch on the channel here, Clef, and pretty much what we're going to be talking about today is the PlayStation 5 reveal specs and our opinion on it. Let's get into it. Two. All right, guys, so right now we're going to talk about the PlayStation 5 reveal, or should I say the PlayStation 5 spec reveal. Uh, what do you think about it, Clef? Um, man, I'm, I'm definitely excited about this. I've been real hungry for some official information on this from Sony for quite a while now. And now we got that, you know, got some pretty good uh, information here. So I'm definitely happy. Yeah, and you know, that's a pretty good point, though, because there have been so many nasty rumors swirling around. We haven't really been able to get any real information. And it's good now that we finally have some good, real concrete information. Um, personally... I'm very excited for it. Like, I know the PlayStation 5 is going to be a monster. And regardless of that, I feel like the most important thing is the games. And we already know how Sony does with that. So that's kind of my main sticking point. Um, but yeah, let's just talk about some new features that they talked about on the spec reveal. So pretty much they were talking about the SDD versus a hard drive. They were just talking about how much faster and how much more efficient the SSD is. And it's actually a specialized SSD, which is highly customized just for the PlayStation 5. What, what do you think about that, Clef? Well, yeah, that, that highly specialization is going to make it a lot faster than we initially thought. Um, basically, they were talking about, Mark Cerny is, himself gave this information, as far as the PS4's uh, HDD uh, load times that it'll take 20 seconds just to load one gigabyte, to where with the uh, SSD that, as you mentioned, is flat up custom made to work absolutely as fast as possible with the PS5, then it'll actually be able to load two gigabytes in 0.27 seconds. We're talking more than a hundred times the load speed. We could actually start seeing some of these load times that we used to be able to enjoy back in the day of cartridge games like the you know Super Nintendo and whatnot where that was one advantage that they had over disc is those insanely short load times. Well, we'll now be able to have those kind of insanely short load times, but also the much bigger... Um, yeah, so we'll be able to have the much bigger environment that you get from disc. <clears throat> and yeah, that's a good point, Clef, because, you know, it's funny how PlayStation 5, the new SSD, a, a lot of people believe that... Well, should I say a lot of haters believe that the only benefit will be, you know, extremely fast load times. What they don't understand is this SSD is highly customized, as I said earlier. It, it changes the entire game. Like, not only, you know, will it minimize loading speed, but it also will al allow developers to do so much more with their games. Like, they'll be able to build bigger open worlds, you know. They'll be able to, you know, make worlds that aren't, you know, pull that, that aren't pretty much, like, you know, pulled back by the limitations of mechanical hard drives. And not only that, but another thing which I don't hear a lot of people talking about is how memory will be used so much more effectively. Like, memory being used with this SSD on the PlayStation 5 is going to be used so much better. It's going to be used so much more effectively. Yeah, uh, Mark Cerny flat out said that with the current PS4, because of the really low, you know slow load times, they got to make sure and load up a bunch of information beforehand uh, into the RAM. And some of it, they don't even know if they'll even need to use. Some of that information will never be used. Some of it will, of course. So it's taken up a lot of the 8 gigabytes of RAM that it has on there with information that will never be used to where the PS5 is going to have 16 gigabytes of RAM. And, of course, with the insanely fast reload times, or, or load times, I should say, they only need to load the information that is actually going to be used so that 16 gigabytes is a lot greater than just double. Exactly. And not only that, but uh, something else that people aren't also talking about, since they think it's only fast load times, they're also not talking about how the SSD will also have more bandwidth, which means in a pure gameplay terms, that actually means games will suffer way less popping, and which means when you're, you know, playing throughout the game, you're not going to see environmental things in the background just popping in, you know, spontaneously, you know. And uh, another thing also is that, you know, booting up games will be extremely fast. Like, it'd be pretty much, like, way faster than previously. Um, uh, what do you think yeah. about that, Clef? Well, obviously, the load times are what kills uh, people on waiting. You know, if you've got to wait a whole minute or longer for a game to load, 
Um, or, you know, like let's say a load scene where it's got to load the next environment, that just kills the flow of a game. And, of course, it also kills uh, the developers, too, because they've got to actually design the game around all that garbage. And so it's allow them a lot more freedom in designing their game. Exactly. And <clears throat> not only that, even in the game development aspect, like, it's actually going to make uh, fast travel, for an example, like, we can use that as an example, it's actually going to make that pretty much instantaneous due to the speeds of the SSD. So, it, guys, it, it changes a lot more than just the base loading speed. Like, it, it, it benefits pretty much. The PlayStation 5 is going to benefit on all levels with this SSD. They, uh, Mark Cerny has made sure of this. Like, he, he really made sure that it was going to do, you know, way more than a regular SSD ever could. Well, another thing, too, that Mark Cerny uh, uh, directly said in the video is that um, it takes you approximately a half a second to turn your character around in the game. So in that half a second, that game or the SSD will be able to load four gigabytes of information in that time. That could create some ability for the developers to make some really awesome uh, gameplay areas. Facts. <clears throat> and that's a good point. Um, there's, there's a lot of benefits to this SSD, some of which we probably don't even know yet. But um, from what I've heard so far, you know, I'm I'm definitely excited for it, man. I and I just I just can't wait. You know, it's really an ex it's really an exciting thing. It'll, it'll be very interesting to see. Like as you mentioned, we don't even know everything yet. It'd be very interesting to see how some of these game developers utilize this technology in ways that we haven't even thought up yet. Yeah, and and the thing is that we're one last thing I want to say when it comes to this SSD, and then we'll move on to the next topic is that. The thing about the SSD is that a lot of people don't understand how much PlayStation developers, or should I say the first party developers for PlayStation, how much, you know, they're willing, how far they basically push the hardware and trying to maximize the performance that they can out of that console. Like, they don't just, you know, you know, make, they don't just push it, but they push it on all levels. They try to genuinely make the game as good as it possibly can be, regardless of the specs. Yeah. And, and basically, like you're, you know, to, to to add to that, basically they're really pushing the uh, capabilities of that machine to basically show other developers, hey, this is what this is capable of. Why don't you start utilizing it too? Facts. And I just can't wait because I know for a fact that PlayStation developers, I know for a fact, or should I say the first party at least, I know for a fact that they're going to use this SSD and they're going to probably do things we haven't even thought possible before. And honestly, I just can't wait for it. But um, moving on to the next topic, um, we also have the time to triangle. Um, I, I remember, Clef, you had some opinions on that. Yeah, so to explain time to triangle real quick, uh, this is a term that Mark Cerny used. Basically, it's the time that it takes for a developer to learn how to program on this new machine. Because obviously every machine's different. There's going to be some time to learn for it. And the uh, time to triangle for the earlier machines just kept on getting longer and longer. Uh, the PS1 started with one to two months of time to triangle. And then if you go to the PS3, it was six to 12 months. So seriously, could you imagine having to learn how to program on this machine for six to 12 months before you can actually even start uh, any of your projects? That's garbage, and obviously that's why that would obviously be a big reason why the PS3 suffered so much. To where PS4, they dropped that back down to the PS. All right, guys. Well, that's the breaking news for today. Uh, make sure you guys hit that like button, and make sure you don't forget to hit that little bell icon. Make sure notifications are on, so every time I come up with a video, you can you can be the first one to see it. I want to thank you guys for coming in and for watching me. Y'all have a good day, and I'll see you later. Peace.